Well, our next guest is a fund manager based in the U.S., but he's in India right now to market his funds to high net worth investors there. Philip Blumberg is founding chairman and CEO of Blumberg Capital Partners, joining us now live from Mumbai. Philip, great to have you with us today. Tell us, how's the trip going so far? It's going very well. Um, I've had some opportunities with meetings here in Delhi, uh, in Delhi and here in Mumbai, and um, I'm very impressed with the Indian real estate sector, although there are some challenges to uh, U.S. institutional money coming into that sector. Uh, you're talking about the real estate in- sector. I noticed that uh, there, there have been sort of a relatively poor returns coming from that uh, sector as of late. Are you expecting this to, uh, I guess, to accelerate or to uh, the, the sector as a whole to improve, to turn around? I'm actually expecting it to turn around. There are already signs in the Indian real estate sector of a turnaround. Partially that's because of the robust growth this country sustains, and partially because so much of it is in the real estate sector. We're already seeing signs of the real estate Indian economy coming back, unlike uh, other parts of the West. What about regulation in this area? Very good point. Here's the obstructions to large institutional offshore capital, non-Indian capital coming into, into India. Regulation and tax. The regulation only th- for the last three years have we been able to invest in Indian development projects, and we're not able to invest in post-development stabilized projects. The bulk of the kinds of investing my company does and many uh, investment managers is in income-producing properties after development. So until the regulations are loosened to allow for a better flow of capital into existing buildings, um, I think you will not see the large foreign capital flow into India's real estate sector. And I think that's first. Secondly, the tax and fee structure is very high. And third, there needs to be a greater degree of transparency. Unfortunately, with Indian real estate, much of the land cost drives profits. And the rest of the development cycle, it's unclear where the profits are going to come from. So I'd say if there were adjustments to regulatory and tax uh, structures here in India, we'd see very large capital flows into this country for real estate. But, Philip, are you not betting on something that hasn't yet happened and there's no clear clear guidance as to exactly when it will happen? Yes, I am, unfortunately. But I would tell you that I just spoke at the Cityscape con- conference here, and the large buzz among the audience, and certainly among real estate and banking officials there, was the need for some regulatory improvement to allow those kinds of, of non-Indian capital flows into the market. So my sense is that there's a building degree of... Uh, desire to see it, certainly from the practitioners and the banks and the financial institutions. Whether the government responds or not, I don't know. I, I do, I'm aware that you all have some regulatory changes to the, to the basic structure and model of investment in Indian real estate, and I think that's also badly needed. Models in Asia often focus on individual investors in projects, meaning projects aren't under unified title or management. It makes it very hard to get large tenants or long-term leases, and until that structure changes, Uh, The fragmentation of Indian real estate projects also thwarts our ability to access it. At the same time, we look at the market and say it's one of the fastest growing markets in the world, certainly one of the largest, with high degree of demand for for IT-type facilities, business parks, and even Class A office. So we're hoping to see regulatory loosening that will allow our kind of capital to come into this country. Uh, Philip, just moving on from India, I notice that you are planning on heading over to Dubai on the 15th of this month to evaluate uh, yeah. investment opportunities over there. Uh, I guess uh, investment sentiment in particular surrounding that region has taken a quite a solid hit. What are you expecting to find? Well, I, actually, I, I came from there uh, last week, and you're right, we return next week. Um, I, it was a gloomy environment. The continuous uh, public announcements of Uh, either potential debt defaults or deferrals of interest payments um, is the tip of the iceberg. And I think the initial reaction uh, by the Sheikh of censoring uh, bad articles and media store coverage uh, didn't do anything to help the transparency of the situation. Since then, they are allowing straight coverage of the situation. And the fact of the matter is that, um, that Dubai concentrated so much of its sovereign wealth internally that when an internal problem occurs, it has double effect. It has an effect on the economy and, a de- and then an increasing effect on the, um, on the sovereign wealth fund's stability. The other fact, though, is that Dubai has one of the greatest infrastructures in the Middle East. So I anticipate in five years we'll see a very vibrant Dubai, but for the next five years it's going to be a very difficult time in the real estate sector to digest the, the level of overbuilding. We are looking at investing in projects in the GCC, and I think there are some great markets throughout the GCC. Mm-hmm. 
but markets which have taken too much debt and have invested too much right. internally create a higher risk threshold mm. that makes us a little uh. bit concerned. Yeah, it's certainly going to be an interesting picture over the next five years. I would like to be uh, watching that one very closely. Philip, great yes. to have you with us today. Thank you so much for joining us. Philip Blumberg with me there from Blumberg Capital Partners.